Hi, I'm Jackie Autrequa from Airdrie, Alberta, Canada, and today we're going to be making a mermaid for Balloon Magic, the magazine. So for the base, I've grabbed some 5-inch round balloons. We're going to be using the big polka dot purples as well as some periwinkles. For the tail of the mermaid, I grabbed some 646 in the Caribbean blue as well as 350 and 260s. The body of the mermaid is going to be in blush and today we're using 350, 160 and the 12 inch quick link for the head and we're going to be doing some drawing on that at the end so stay tuned. And for the hair, I'm going to do some purple today so 260s and 160 for that. And just to add some um, added elements at the end, I've grabbed some white, yellow and coral in the 160 and for the bubbles today, we're going to be doing 350 in the clear. We're going to start with the base. I'm going to grab my purple big polka dots in the 5 inch and inflate them for pumps. And we're going to do this four more times. Creating a duplet out of the pairs. And the last one we are just going to tie into one of the pairs. And we are going to slip these together. Now for the second layer, we are only going to do three pumps. And we actually only need four of these because the tail is going to nestle into this layer. are going to create duplets out of the pairs. And turn that one into a quad. So I'm just going to flatten out this five pack here. And I'm actually going to take one of my 260s in the Caribbean blue and tie it around the center because we're going to need this to attach the mermaid tail later. I'm going to flatten up my four pack. Wish it down so you're not seeing any space anymore. And tie that in pretty tight. And just to secure so it doesn't let go, I'm going to tie it into one of the nozzles in the middle. Like that. So we're going to put this aside and start work on our tail. So to start the tail, I'm going to grab my 646 and I'm going to inflate it quite a ways. about 12 inches and I'm going to let a little bit air out to soften it. I'm actually going to give it a squeeze too against my body. So to start it I'm going to make two pinch twists at the top. actually all we need from this balloon so I'm going to tie it off put that aside for now we're going to move on to our 350s to make the fin part of our tail I'm going to inflate this to 18 inches and I'm going to do the same for the next one And we're going to actually tie these together. So the fin starts with two pinch twists. They're going to be about two inches each. So you have 
something like this. You're gonna take one of them and make a six inch bubble, followed by another six inch bubble. And it's always twisting back into this intersection where the pinch is stuck. Now your third bubble is going to be a little shorter. And we're just gonna push that through. We're gonna do one more to head back. is what your one fin is gonna look like. We're gonna continue on the other side and just mirror that same thing. Another six inch bubble. Another three inches and we're just gonna push it through. And then head back with the bubble that's remaining. And you can just tuck the tails in. I like to skip cutting whenever I can. You can just tuck them away. and They'll save you some grief later, just in case they decide to let go. So this is what we end up with for the little fins at the bottom. And I'm just gonna take the tail from the 646 and just feed it through. And we want that on pretty tight. I'm actually going to wind this around a couple times just to really secure that. Add one final detail for the tail, and that's going to be with this 260. We're going to inflate it until there's about five inches left, and it is going to pull right into this pinch twist with that nozzle. So I'm just wrapping it around the crease in between the two bubble sizes and then back through the pinch twist. So you end up with something like that. And it's just a pretty added detail. You don't have to add this part, but I think it really makes the tail look really pretty. So with whatever's left, you're gonna tuck that in. Again, take the tail of it and just push it through the middle. Just adjust it. And that is going to be the tail. So for attaching the tail to the base, this is why we left our 260 on the top. We are going to make a space where our fifth bubble would have gone. And we are going to take that tail and just nestle it in and use that 260. move on to the body of the mermaid. So we're going to grab our 350 in the blush. And I'm going to inflate this one about 10 inches. Tie it off. And we're just going to make a little pinch twist. And this is actually going to be her neck. So you don't want to make it too big. We're going to say about two inches. And we're going to 
tie that nozzle off so that pinch twist doesn't go anywhere. And her body is going to be seven inches long. I'm gonna cut off the excess and tie it. And that's actually gonna go directly into this space that we left. Her. I'm gonna grab the last 260 in the blush and I'm gonna inflate it with about six inches left. And this is going to be her seashell top. It's going to start with two pinch twists, about an inch each. Another small pinch twist, about an inch. We're gonna do a tiny little twist in the middle. Go back another inch and do two more pinch twists. We're gonna head back one more time. A one inch bubble through that middle pinch twist. And one last bubble. We end up with something like this. I'm gonna soften the rest of the balloon and wrap it around the back of our 350, measuring it. And I'm just gonna pinch off a bit, cut it, and tie it. And we know that's going to fit. I'm gonna wrap that tail around our first two pinch twists and cut off the excess. We're just gonna wanna lift those up a little bit. She's still a young mermaid. So our next step is to do her head. So I'm going to plate this quite a bit, more than I want, just to stretch the latex out a little bit. And then I'm going to let that air out until our head's nice and round. You can always line it up just to see what it's going to look like. There we go. I think that's about right. I'm going to tie that off at the nozzle end. And we've just taken a 12 inch quick link and made it into an eight inch balloon. So what I'm going to do, you're gonna see there's a lot of excess latex up here. I'm actually gonna pull that as tight as I can go until our head's nice and round and the balloon's quite firm. And I'm gonna tie off that quick link end as well. And this is just gonna help when we connect her hair so that her hair isn't pulling this knot up from her head. So I'm actually gonna tie this into that neck pinch twist quite tightly. Tie it off and I'm gonna cut those nozzles off because we don't want too much extra latex sitting there at that point. So it's sitting like this and you can tell her head looks kind of crazy. But that's because I have left some room for the hair. So once the hair comes in, her head is going to sit nice and vertical. So for the hair, we're actually making it purple today. So we're gonna grab two 260s in the purple. And we're gonna inflate that quite a bit, about three inches left over. I'm gonna do two at a time. And make sure you soften it. You can just skip tying that one and just tie it into the other balloon. Save you from tying some knots. I'm going to start this with two pinch twists. And those two pinch twists are going to go straight onto that top knot of the quick wing. So this is 
the most important step for the hair because you want it so that it's going to sit vertical. If I make this bubble too short, her head is going to be looking up the whole time. If you make it too long, then it's going to be looking down. So you want it just to sit flat, measure it off. You also don't want any gaps here between her head and her hair. I'm going to wrap that around that neck area until I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to head back up, giving it a squeeze as I go. You should be able to get three passes out of your first balloon. And we're going to continue with the second one, same thing. We're going to head down to the neck, wrap it around the neck pinch twist, head back up. And then one more heading down. going to inflate two more 260s in the purple, leaving the same amount, about three inches at the tail. And we're just going to tie these together as well. So with this set of 260s, I'm going to pull through the back of these pinch twists. And I am going to slowly coil these together. We don't want this so tight. And it's only going to coil down until her neck. Once you reach her neck, we're going to wrap around the back of the head, flat, and then head up to the top of those pinch twists that are sitting at the top of the quick wing. So I'm going to take this one tail from the 260 and push it in to those pinch twists and take that second. 60 and do the same thing. If you have any extra left over, instead of cutting it, I find every time you cut the balloon, you risk um, a balloon from deflating. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just turn this over, take the tail, and tuck it into those pinch twists. Because at the end, I'm going to have a number of little loops at the top of her head. So this is just going to be one of those. I'm going to inflate one more 260, leaving about the same amount. And this is going to go back into those pinch twists in her hair. And this one is just going to wrap around and come back up nestling in between those first two. So you're sitting with something like this. I'm going to make a few coils now. We're going to make one with our 260. There's a number of ways you can do this. I like to fully inflate the balloon just to stretch it. And I'm going to just use my Legenda and wrap it around my 160 pump. I know I always have my 160 pump with me, and it's always going to be the same size coil when I use my 160 pump, so it's just an easy way to do it. 
gonna let some air out and tie it off. And I'm going to do the same thing with a 160. Make sure you inflate it. Don't skip that step. Sometimes I get lazy and do that and it never works out the way I want it to. So always pre-inflate. And you're going to coil it. And we are going to tie those together. And I'm gonna pull those through this bubble on the top. I'm gonna take my bigger balloon, the 260, and wrap it around and meet up on the other side with the 160. And I'm just gonna put a pinch twist here to secure in the 260. put a couple more 160s on. I always figure the more balloons the better. The bigger the hair the better. I'm gonna do a couple more. And I always find it easiest to tie two together instead of trying to pull one in at a time. I'm gonna put a few loops in it and these are gonna be our loops sitting at the top of her hair. So I'm going to make three three inch bubbles which are gonna be turning into about one and a half inch loops and I'm just gonna feed those through the top of the pinch twist. Wrapping it around that pinch twist that we already have at the top of her hair. And I'm just gonna pull these down into that one pinch twist we have on the side already. And this one as well. We're going to finish our mermaid's body off by finishing her arms. So we're going to grab that 160 in the blush. We don't need very much of it. Maybe inflate half the balloon and tie it off with quite a bit left at the nozzle because this is going to tie into her neck. So I'm going to pull that in quite snugly and wrap it around a couple times. going to pull up those seashells and I actually want her arms to sit over here because she's going to be holding a seashell of her own. So I'm going to make one arm longer than the other because I want it to sit over here. I'm going to pull that up, measure it off, twist it, snip and tie. And this part is going to get pulled right back into that pinch twist at the neck. I'm just going to cut off the excess. Adding some extras now, 
And one of those extras is that seashell I was talking about. So we are gonna blow up a coral balloon in the 160s, uh, about 18 inches. Soften and tie the nozzle off. This is going to start with two pinch twists. Smallish pinch twist, maybe a little bit less than an inch. I'm going to make a three inch bubble, followed by another three inch bubble. A two and a half inch bubble, followed by another two and a half inch bubble, and that's gonna go right back into those pinch twists. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Two and a half. Two and a half. And then finally, we're going to make two one and a half inch bubbles. Going back into the pinch twist. And we're going to mirror that on the other side. I'm gonna snip off the tail here right at the end because I want what's left of this balloon, but I don't want any air in it. So I am going to gather these pieces together really tightly and take what's left of this 160 and just wrap it around the top of those loops. And I'm gonna pull this into those 260s again. I'm gonna head back in the other direction and do the same thing, just to make sure this is really as snug as I can get it. And you can see I'm really pulling them together at the same time. This really helps to make it look like a seashell. You're gonna end up with this. So just grab a scrap, whatever you have handy. I have a little bit left from her arms. I'm gonna tie that into those pinch twists. And I want to put that right there. I'm just gonna wrap it around her arms. Just softly. You don't want it pulling too much. I'm just going to tuck those ends away. And give her her little seashell. So another addition that I like is adding a flower. And I find the yellow just gives it a nice little pop. So we're going to inflate the yellow 160 about 18 inches. Tie it off. And we are going to start this one with three little half inch pinch twists. down about two inches, make a bubble, softening as I go, I'm going to make a loop, there's also about two inches, and I'm going to do this two more times. I'm going to go back up to those pinch twists with another bubble. And then head back down. So we have three bubbles going up, as well as three loops. And this is going to be our little flower. We don't need what's left here, so I'm going to snip right at the tail, let that arrow wrap it around a couple times so it's not going anywhere. Just adjust those pinch twists so they look pretty on the top. And I'm going to take that flower and find a nice home for it. I think it looks pretty right there. We're just gonna wrap it under those bubbles and just let it sit pretty. So 
So there's a couple other little additions we can do. I like to curl some white balloons and just add those to the base. So like always, we are going to pre-inflate the balloon, wrap it around my 160 pump. And inflate. And we are going to make four of these. I find these add a little bit of movement to the piece and just fill up some space and they just look fancy. So we are going to take two. We're actually going to tie them together separately. I'll show you there's a reason for this because I actually want some slack between the two. So I'm going to tie these with a little bit of space left. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to feed them through the base. And if you tie them together too tightly, it's going to want to lift those two layers. But if you leave a little bit of a space, it will just nestle in and find its happy little place. Just like that. I'm going to do two more. Leaving a little bit at the end every time. And then just tying those nozzle ends together. Flip these under those periwinkles. So our final step is to make some bubbles out of our clear. And you don't need to inflate it too much. I'm going to do about eight inches and let out a bunch of air so it's nice and soft. Give it a squeeze, and we're just gonna be making a few bubbles with these, as many as you can get out of this balloon. Now you notice that I'm really twisting this a whole bunch. If you don't twist them a lot, I find that they tend to come undone, and uh, that they don't like to go back. So we're going to really twist these a lot around, like five or six times each. So just get as many as you can out of the one balloon, taking the tail and tying it into the nozzle. And you are going to want to leave a little bit at the end because that is what we're using to tie in. We're going to do the same thing with one more clear balloon, letting the air out soften and making a series of bubbles. Don't want it puffy, right at the tip. And we are just going to pull that in. Just find a nice spot for it. I like it to kind of come up behind her. So I'm gonna pull it under the flower area. And just wrap it around one of those periwinkle balloons. as you go and we're gonna add one more and I'm gonna actually tuck it right in there because I see a nice spot where I think it's gonna go. Just fill that back area up. We have so much happening over here with her tail I just kind of want to balance it. Straighten her out and that is the end of the twisting. Um, 
We can add a face at this point. Uh, you can use a printed face as well, but I think we're gonna draw this. So I like to use uh, Sharpie markers and a paint pen of any sort. I like to use the Edding White because I like that it's very opaque and it sits right on top of that Sharpie and doesn't liquefy it again. I'm gonna start with her eyes. I always start with the right eye because I am right-handed. I'm just gonna make an oval. Now, as far as placement goes, I like to start it just above the middle of the balloon. If you do it too high, you're kind of drawing into her forehead. So I like to start it just where, where her ear would be. If she had ears, she does not have ears. But if she had. I'm using the side of the Sharpie to fill it in. Goes a little faster. It just gives better coverage. So I'm gonna get it kinda to where I like it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip her over, and I'm gonna finish it off this way. Try to get the edges as flat as I can. And then while it's upside down, I'm also gonna make the other eye. If I try to make the other eye right side up, I'm gonna end up smudging that right eye. But if I turn her over, I can actually rest my hand. So I'm gonna line it up. And this way I can also see the right eye and try to copy it as best as I can. the side of the Sharpie to fill it in. So I'm gonna turn it over at this point and just take a look at her. Make sure she doesn't look crazy. But they're kind of symmetrical. I am going to start with her eyelashes now. I'm gonna take the point of the Sharpie, go a little bit to the left of that oval, push in, and pull up kind of doing that kind of motion just so it leaves a tip at the end. And I'm gonna give her two of those. Just two lashes, no more. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm using my pinky as an anchor here to kind of hold it straight. Just flicking it up. So, you can see she looks kind of angry right now. So to counter that, what I do is add a little bit, like a hint of an eyelid. And that will just soften her eyes a little bit. That is actually all we need for the black Sharpie. I'm gonna move on to the brown Sharpie and we're gonna do a little hint of a nose. So it's gonna go bet between her eyes, shockingly, um, but like just between her eyes, at the base of her eyeballs. We don't want it down too far. It's gonna give her a long drawn out face. So we're just gonna put it right here and it's just barely, it's almost a shadow of a nose. It's just a little comma. And we're gonna use the brown as well for the eyebrows because I find it less severe than the black. So I'm gonna start just above where we made that lash. And I'm not gonna curve them too much. And we're flicking as well, just like we did with that lash. And I'm just gonna try to copy that as best as I can on the other side. And you have to remember that eyebrows our sisters, they're not twins, so we're just gonna do our best to make them look as close as we can. And our final step, well, other than the white, is to do a little bit of a mouth. So once again, just like her nose is a little hint of a nose, her mouth is just going to be just a little smirk, just off to the side. I just got a little secret. She's laughing. And then our last part is to do the twinkle in the eye. And we do that with the ending white. So if I make an oval eye, I like to make the highlight oval as well. And just a little bit below too. And I like to put them on the same side of the eyeball. And 
And that is how I make a mermaid. I'm Jackie Ochitois, and this is my mermaid. I like to call her Shelly for obvious reasons. Created with Qualitex.